hey i'd like to welcome you all back to the channel um in the last video i got my uh defective uh, well blown out airbag off of my 1988 marmon um, i got a new airbag uh swapped all the stuff over so i'm now going to try and put the new airbag on and hopefully this truck will be drivable um, here very shortly so we're going to catch all this on video and i'm going to share it with you all and you can laugh at me as i bust up my knuckles and try and squeeze this stinking thing into this tight little hole have fun and stay tuned Oh. Okay, so now I'm going to adjust you down here so you can see where I'm trying to squeeze this bag in. I'm trying to put the bag down in here, but it's a pretty tight fit because I have a brake chamber here and a steering arm right there. And that became a real problem when I was trying to get the old bag out. I had actually had to start the truck up and move the steering wheel back and forth so I could move and pivot the old bag to get it out so we'll see i might have to do all that again just to get this new bag back in As you can see, it's kind of a tight fit. I'm trying to squeeze it around and get it underneath this brake line, which I don't know if it's gonna fit underneath that. Okay, here we go. We're getting somewhere. Now, I have to get this in here, but then press down so I can get it in between the old spring and the uh, frame. I have that blocked up, but obviously it's not blocked up high enough. So I might have to go get a jack and make a support to actually lift the frame a little higher while leaving the spring drop. So we'll see, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but I'm thinking that's probably what's gonna happen. Yeah, I do believe that's probably what I'm gonna have to do. Okay, so after a lot of coaxing, I was able to get the new bag in. Now I'm working on tightening it up and getting the airlines hooked back up.
Now we're just trying to get this thing tightened up, and get the airline on correctly and tightened up, and then we're going to start it up and make sure that I have no leaks and it's working properly. Okay. Okay. Now, hopefully I got the right wrench. The airline's tight. Okay, so to grab another wrench, I grabbed the wrong size. can't get a socket in there and actually use a ratchet on it because it's right in between this metal plate and the front axle so it's only big enough to fit a wrench on so I only can get a little bit of a turn I have to pull it off put it back on and keep turning Okay, now that's tight. We're going to start the truck up and let it build up air pressure. See if I got any air leaks in this new bag, anything that I got to put on properly. So now we're going to start this bugger up. So now, I'm going to let it idle, build up air pressure, and then I'm going to put air to the front bags so that can lift that off and we'll see if my air bagging extravaganza has been an, a uh, success. Okay, now we're inside the truck, letting this build up air pressure, give it a little bit more fuel.
to the front suspension right now but once I get air built up over here well then I'm gonna adjust the valve which is down here and add air into the front suspension so we'll see if my bag works it's building air quite nicely about 80 pounds and then we're going to add air to the front front now it's probably going to take a little bit because it's trying to fill up the back airbags as well Jump out. Now, this is the valve for the front airbags, so we're going to add air to it. And it's adjusting up already. the piece of steel that I was using to block it up the airbag is expanding properly Keep it right around 60 PSI. There we go. up nicely go the back air bags are up and inflated I think this thing's ready to go I think tomorrow we might take this for a drive okay now we're back next day Let me shut this thing off we're gonna get these manual slack adjusters adjusted properly 
least it breaks. Reach in here. Okay, brakes are all released. Walk back here and check the situation out. Of course I have the wheels chalked. That way it doesn't roll away on me or roll over me. So we're gonna get these adjusted and uh, then we're gonna take her for a drive and see how it does. Okay, since these are old style manual slack adjusters, they're not the automatics that uh, most of the kiddos are used to, you know, the flip-flop wearing crowd, um, with their Adidas track pants and all that other stuff. Don't even get me started. Um, but, we have these wonderful things now everybody gets kind of freaked out oh man they're hard to adjust and all oh, the 9 16 wrench pretty easy now 9 16 wrench and a rag because they tend to get rather greasy sometimes depending on where they're at now we look down here and right here is where we adjust. I have the brakes released right now, so that way I can adjust them properly. Now if you look, I have the slack adjuster right there, and I'm gonna take this semi-clean rag, pretty dusty, sitting in the garage, And I'm going to wipe off the majority of the grease. And then I'm going to take my 9 16 wrench. Actually, I think it's my son's 9 16 wrench, but uh, either way, a wrench just the same. Now, when you put it on, you have to put it on and then push down on this piece here. Now, you want to turn it like you're tightening it and turn it the whole way until it stops and then once you get it tight you move it back half a turn at least that's how i was taught some people say quarter turn other people say half a turn i usually just do half a turn because i'm not really sure to tell you the truth okay see now there i have it tight now i'm going to take it back half a turn so I'm going to move the wrench from here, move it back to where it's straight up, that is quarter turn. Now put it back down here and press in. It doesn't want to go backwards anymore. Hmm. Wonder if I... Want to go that way? Yes, it will go that way. There. Now, for some reason, that arm continues to move. Okay, now we're going to do on the other side, on the rear axle, adjust this around, and again, now we'll get in here and wipe this one off, that way I don't get my wrench all nasty.
as you can see, it's a little bit of a tight spot getting down in there, but we'll get it figured out. seems to have gotten about as tight as it's going to get so I will crank it back it's half a turn go there's that okay now I know I did the rear axle from up top it's a lot easier to reach it from up top on the front axle they're pretty much exposed right here so I can get them a lot easier just by getting down on the ground didn't feel like grabbing a creeper so I'm just gonna slide around I was already at work today, kind of half dirty and sweaty, so it's no big deal to roll around on the ground. So first we'll start out and get all that grease off of that adjustment. This one seems to be not cooperating with pushing in. I might have to go and get some persuasion to make that turn. Yeah. Okay, so I went and got a pry bar and was able to get that loose to where I can now get the wrench on it and do the adjustment that it needs. Okay, now we got it the whole way tight. Turn it back, half a turn. And there we go with that one. Now we'll go over to the other side. Ooh, you'll see right up my nose. Okay, and here we are, front axle on the right side of the truck, that would be the passenger side. Oops, bang against those quarter fenders. Let's see if this one, I'll wipe this off quick, get a little of that excess grease off. There we go, now. Again, I'm going to have to use this so that way it pushes that spring in. There we go. Now that is loose and can be turned and adjusted. Remember, you have to press it in 
each time to turn it. And these seem to be really far out of adjustment. is I do believe the whole way Okay, now we take it back, our half turn. So I'll put it there and turn it quarter turns at a time. And it's one quarter and one quarter. Okay, so that seems to be it. So now I'm back out from underneath the truck, which is always a challenge for somebody who's 50 years old. And trying to roll around on the ground underneath the truck. So we're gonna see, gonna set the brakes. So here we are, rolling down the road. I think I got the brakes adjusted properly.
Okay, well, we took it for a drive. I have the brakes all adjusted properly. Um, even bobtailing, it's, it stops nice. No, nothing's locking up or sliding. Um, I had that problem before where one or two wheels would sometimes just lock up when you'd hit the brakes. Um, it doesn't do that anymore. It stops very nicely. Um, I had a fuel system issue. Um, I dumped some Howl's uh, fuel injector cleaner in it and uh, I think I'm going to change the fuel filter again. The truck's been sitting, um, hasn't been really a work truck for quite a while. So I'm guessing I'm probably just going to change the fuel filters again and do all that. It just keep driving it around here, just get everything cleaned out of it. Um, I have a chance at another truck possibly, um, I'm not going to say what it is or anything like that just yet. I, I don't know if it'll happen. Uh, the guy seems to be interested in this truck because this is a great truck. Um, and I'm interested in his because, uh, a little sleeper on it and I can run some further distance stuff with it, get into South Carolina and Georgia and some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's an e-log exempt truck and emissions, there's no emissions or anything like that. So it's perfect for exactly what I want to do with it. Um, if not, I'm going to keep moving forward with this truck. Um, probably transmission, probably put a new fifth wheel on it, a um, couple other things and get this thing ready to start pulling freight. A um, friend of mine and, um, and I are looking at some options together. He has a uh, an older Pete cab over. So um, we're looking at a couple things here and there, just kind of working. And we don't want to be gone for weeks at a time because we both have wives that we love and care about and like to be around. So. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do to make money to keep a roof over your head and keep that wife that you love and care about happy. So I am uh, going to move forward forward with this truck if it doesn't sell. Like I said um, in my previous video, I have it on Facebook Marketplace for sale. Um, I have a price on it. The price is, is negotiable. Um, I'm also open to trades, very open to trades for something that is also on the old school side. Um, I'd like something with a sleeper. This doesn't have one. People tell me that, hey, you got that long wheelbase, you could throw a small sleeper on it. it that just turned, this truck looks really great without the sleeper. With that long wheelbase, just imagine that hooked to like a step deck or something like that. That would look really, really great. Um, maybe a headache rack on this. Maybe I'll just do that myself and run the truck myself. But at this point, I'm looking for something that, you know, like I would love a 9670, a K100, um, one of the Freightliner FLTs something along those lines um, so trucks up for sale uh, up for trade um, I'd like to thank you for watching the video I'd like to thank you for putting up with my rambling and me not always being the smartest guy in the world because a lot of this stuff I'm going along from memory I was a truck mechanic back in the mid-90s. Um, I worked for a large motor carrier and I was a uh, I was a mechanic and I worked for a farm equipment dealer and I was a mechanic there and one day I was sitting at home and I saw this ad that said, hey, you two can drive the big rigs. I said, well, I already know how. So I went and basically use them to get my license because I didn't have a truck to get my license with. So that was many years ago. 
a long time ago, um, about three decades ago. So I don't know anything but trucking for the most part anymore, really. So I'm trying to remember how to adjust manual slack adjusters. Um, I'm trying to remember how to different stuff like that because back when I was turning wrenches on trucks, um, computerized engines weren't a thing yet. And ECMs on motors were few and far between. I think the Detroits had some, but that was about it. That's the early series 60s. Um, so that's kind of my story. Um, so I'm going to end this video now with a Sayonara and a Vita Zane and whatever else. Au revoir. Aloha. I don't know. Any of those other things. Um, I'm just a 50 year old truck driver and I love trucking and I hate what it's become. And I'm trying to keep some kind of old school streak alive here. Um, I want to go back into business for myself and start running for myself again. So keep me in your prayers and please like and subscribe. I'm going to try to keep the videos coming on a more regular basis. Um, thanks for watching. God bless and have a great day.